so geeking cool. Hey, I'm Frank. And I'm Derek. And welcome to another episode of So Geeking Cool. As you can see, I think our theme today is Batman. Right. You can kind of see Derek's shirt peek out a little bit behind there. Got a Batman Returns emblem on his shirt. Uh, we've got the Batman 89 cowl on this side. We've got the Batman Returns cowl on this side. We've got the Dark Knight right in the center. Uh, we're going to be talking about what we thought of the new movie. Uh, we're really going to kind of get into that. And um, before we get started, I want to point something out. Derek actually <laughs> went to the theater and saw that movie before I did. Exactly. Correct, 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 correct. Uh, a three-hour movie, uh, two hours and 55 minutes. Uh, definitely out of the norm for me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I guess my process of, uh, watching movies, but, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. I think, um, he was actually a little more excited. I was excited for the movie, but I think his excitement got the better of him and he went, uh, almost on opening night and, yeah. um, uh, I had, uh, some other things going on. So it took me a, a week longer to see it, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of, he now understands how I feel because he was dying to talk about the movie and he uh, couldn't. Yeah. And I was like, you got, you got to go see it. Got to go see it. So many questions, so many, so many, uh, thoughts, questions, uh, that I wanted to ask in, in reference to the movie. And I didn't want to spoil it, but I, I was just excited, uh, and ready to, to be able to talk about it. So, uh, today, uh, the day has come for, for just that. Right. And, um, I think we'll start out by saying, um, was this your first uh, Batman movie to see in the theater? I think so. Okay. I think so. Now, the the only, the Dark Knight um, was the one that I could recall uh, seeing. And I, I don't believe it was at a uh, theater. I think it was at home. But it was a very, uh, one of my personal uh favorites uh well i guess now i can say that now that i've seen two <laughs> <laughs> but before before uh the last batman it was my i guess only favorite okay um well hey everybody has to have a favorite and it doesn't matter how many you've yeah. seen you, you and, and you've you got to a start sample somewhere. size right uh <laughs> and i think that's perfectly fine to uh you know you've started on a journey and now you can go back and watch some of the others um my all-time favorite uh, is still the 89 Batman. And and I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think when they reference that, uh, they reference it as a classic? Yeah, I would okay. say it's a classic. Okay. And and the reason being, uh, and, and I don't want to get off, uh, but Jack Nicholson. Right. Uh, like, I, I mean, his, his smile, I, I mean, when you see him, you, well, for me, when I see him at the Laker games or uh, when I'm watching the games on the TV, uh, of course, and I see him, I, I just, oh, that's the Joker. Right. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that might be my favorite Jack Nicholson role. I don't know. He, he's got so many. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just a great actor. Um, I think uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is great. Uh even his his character from um, uh, uh, from the horror movie The Shining, um, and I'm not a big horror guy, but that man he he really convinced me that he had gone. And, crazy. and, I, and, I, and I think uh, and, and don't want to get too too far off because we're going to be talking about all things back. Right. Uh, but I, I think for Jack Nicholson, my favorite would be uh, The Departed. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I definitely uh, one of my favorite. Um, things about Batman is Batman kind of appeals to a, a really big range of people. Um, if you go back, uh, you even had the black and white, uh, serial films of Batman that, that took place. Um, and they, I think they were 15 episodes each. Um, and those took place, uh, during, I guess the war years. Of and you said war 15 II. episodes? I think so. Okay. Um, and I think they have re-released them as like a feature-length 
films uh, if you find the DVDs. Uh, but then you kind of move into the Adam West uh, television series from the 60s. Um, and I know he's had a huge impact on a lot of, uh, we call them bat buddies in the cosplay community. Okay. And, and for those that don't know, like myself, Adam West is writer. No, a Adam West is Batman. Okay, okay. See, I, I... Adam West and Burt Ward. Burt Ward played Robin. Um, you had Batgirl. You had all of Batman's uh, cast of villains. You had the Joker. Okay. You had the Penguin. Okay. Um, and you, you had... Uh, some really big name actors who were playing these parts. You had Cesar Romero playing the Joker. And one of the coolest things uh, that those fans will tell you is he didn't shave his mustache. He just had them apply the white makeup directly over his uh -huh. mustache. Um, you had um, two different people play Catwoman. Um, you had uh, Vincent Price who played uh, Egghead. Some of the more obscure villains uh, actually got screen time because it was almost a, a contest to see who, who could, could star on uh, the show uh, because kids were so excited. They wanted their actor parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles to try to land roles. Um, and that that's one of the coolest things, in my opinion, about that show. Um, you know, uh, the Penguin kind of set the standard um the actor the penguin or yeah um i'll look it up i don't know why i was thinking danny devito I... now danny devito plays it in batman returns okay, okay okay and um he does a fantastic job too but it's a much different take on the character okay um, okay one of my favorite episodes of the big bang theory actually talks about um who's the best batman and adam west is a guest on the show and he says, he's the best Batman. And when they ask him, well, what makes you think you're the best Batman? He says, out of all of the Batman <laughs> who have been on screen, I'm the only one who didn't have to say, I'm Batman. When I showed up, everybody just knew who I was. Hmm. So so um, was he the, the first? Uh, he was the first in color. Uh, he was on, you know, have you ever heard the saying, same bat time, same bat channel? Okay, yeah. That's where that phrase comes from. Um, it really uh, kind of established, um, I think, the superhero genre as a TV show. If you remember, you know, the pow and the bam. Right, uh, right, right. You know, I think that were that was a lot of kids' first uh, encounter with um, onomatopoeia, right? Okay, okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> the um, whether they knew it or not, but... The other thing it was kind of famous for was like uh, they made a movie where they had all four of his major villains. You had the Joker team up with the Riddler and the Penguin and Catwoman. And at the beginning of the movie, a shark attacks Batman. And, of course, Batman's ready. He's in the Batcopter. He tells Robin, hand me down the uh, Bat shark repellent spray. Mm. Everything was named the Bat. <laughs> you know, this is the Bat remote control this is okay. the bat computer this is the bat mobile this is okay. the bat cycle this right. is the bat copter um so that kind of established that and his utility belt i think really kind of was almost a star in and of itself he always seemed to have some kind of a gadget to, to help okay. him out um but yeah i i think uh that was probably one of my favorite things in the michael keaton movie was when uh, michael keaton he's got the guy and he's holding him over the ledge and he the guy says don't kill me he says, I'm not going to kill you, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell now, your friends now, about me. Now, now, who was the 89 Batman? That's Michael Keaton. Okay, Michael Keaton. And then his response was, I'm Batman. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and that's what he was po poking fun at is, you know. So, 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 so help me here. Uh, Adam West starred in like episodes or was it an actual movie? Both. Um, okay. The, the TV series was on for I think three years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then there was a movie. Okay. Um, okay. And the movie was actually, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, growing up, I, I used to watch that movie a lot. Okay. Um, so then you had the 89 
then you had Batman Returns, and yeah. after that, you had um, a change of actors. You had Val Kilmer step into the role. Okay, I think, yeah, all right. Right, um, and then after him, uh, you had <laughs> George Clooney uh, and his wonderful um, cast of villains led by Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, oh. Mr. Freeze. Chill out. Um, who was known for making like the worst puns I think I've ever seen on a movie. Did that, did, was that one re well received? That, that actually has been talked about a lot by a lot of Batman fans. They say that was the Batman movie that almost killed the franchise. Okay. And it kind okay. of effectively did for a little while. Okay. Um, Batman at that point, um, you know, there was a lot of product placement, and I think the studio kind of interfered a lot, and I think there were a lot of issues uh, that went into the problems that went along with, with that uh, Batman and Robin movie. Um, but a bright spot during that time period was the Batman animated series, which I know uh, a lot of people were coming home from school trying to catch that every day, and that was really, really well done. Um, okay. Um, so then you kind of jump forward a little bit and you get into um, the Christian Bell series, right? Yeah. Uh, Christopher Nolan directed these. And they were kind of based more like if it was a real world situation. Yeah. Um, or at least that, that was kind of the premise that they ran with. And those were some excellent movies. Um, uh, Batman Begins kind of set up the story with Ra's al Ghul. Um, played by Liam Neeson, and then you had uh, it kind of go from that to The Dark Knight, which had a very memorable performance by Heath Ledger as the Joker. Uh, um, and a lot of people say that he's the gold standard, and uh, you know it's hard to argue. I mean, that was a, a, a wonderful uh, portrayal of the character. Um, it set up the Harvey was. Dent storyline with Two Face. It, it, it was uh, Heath Ledger. Um, but but I, I I guess it's just each actor putting their I guess not own spin or embracing uh, the Batman because um, I guess you could debate all day about which you know which Batman you love the best um, and who's your who's your favorite? Mine it's Michael Keaton. Keaton. Okay. Well, like I said, because of the eighty nine, I just I really. I mean, that was the first one I got to see in the first theater. love. Right. And okay. I, I loved uh, the Danny Elfman theme for the movie. Um, he did the soundtrack and I just, the whole thing, it, it just, I loved the way Gotham City looked in that 89 movie. Uh, I loved the Batmobile. The Batmobile is probably the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Um, so, 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 so let's get into um, a review of the uh, new uh, Batman. Right, so you had The Dark Knight Rises, which was the last Christian Bale, okay. and then we were kind of in a Batman drought until they did the Ben Affleck version, right? Okay. So he was in Justice League, and then he was uh, in Batman vs. Superman. I actually reversed that order. He was in Batman vs. Superman, then he was in the Justice League, and then there's the whole Snyder cut, which we won't get into. But then you have uh, Robert Pattinson step into the role of Batman, right? A lot of people were kind of concerned. They were like, is he going to be too much like Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter? Or is he going to be more like uh, his character from Twilight? Uh, mm. And, you know, I, I was surprised at, at how well he carried the role. I think he did a phenomenal job. But I, I'm more interested to hear what was your take on it uh, as someone who has only seen two Batman films um, and who didn't read all the comics as a kid. Tell me what you thought of the movie. Well, uh, first off, uh, the movie was, was great. Um, it was, it was exciting. Uh, it kept me on edge. It was like, you know, it kept leading up to, you know, to something else. But uh, I, I think my, I wanted, it made me want to dive into the history of, um, the family and the history of, of Batman, because, um, I guess it talked a lot about, um, his father, 
uh, and the foundation and the corruption of Gotham City. And, you know, it kind of just wanted me to to dive into the backstory. How how did they come about with all this money? How, how did they become, you know, uh, so loaded or, or, or rich? Um, and, you know, what went wrong? And uh, but it was it was great. Like I said, it kept me on edge. It takes me at least two weeks to watch any movie. Uh, <laughs> and that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> and just for me to uh, to sit in one setting and and to watch that movie says a lot about uh, the movie, the actors, as well as uh, the writers for that movie. So uh, I was very pleased. Uh, and I, I've said I want to see it again. And you told me that it's now uh, showing on HBO Max. So I think I will... Uh, watch it again because I'm sure there are some things I missed. And, and like I said, I had a lot of questions. Uh, one question I asked you when uh, the Riddler, uh, when he was in jail and it was someone in the, in the cell next to him. And I said, well, that's gotta be the Joker because I, I didn't see the joke. And, and that's what I, when I think Batman, I always think the Joker uh, has to be somewhere. Um, and so that was my thought. And that was one question I was dying to ask you, uh, when I saw, after I saw the movie. Uh, but of course I wanted, um, you know, give you a chance to, uh, watch the film and, and not take anything away or, or spoil anything for, uh, you. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it was a, a great, great movie. Uh, uh, Robert, you said Robin or Robert? Robert Pattinson. Okay. Uh, now that's now that's my. Uh, I know that he's somewhat of a big time actor uh, in some other films. You said Harry Potter and, and things of that. Uh, but it was my first time seeing him on screen. I, I know he, you know, appeared in a lot of films. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen, uh, but I know he has a, um, you know, a. a I would say a big following, but I, I think he did a great job. I, I think he embraced it. And, uh, it was a lot of people were saying it was, it was dark. It was dark, but at the same time, I would say one of the things that kind of helps with a Batman story is it's supposed to be dark, right? Okay. Why do we always see Batman at night? Okay. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? But seriously, why? Why do you think you always see Batman at night? Because that's when bats come out, right? Well, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's also when a lot of criminal activity happens too, right? Yeah, um, right, right. And then what about <laughs> what about his tan lines? Mm. I mean, you notice there's a big, big gaping hole right here. Yeah. That would lead Bruce Wayne would have a very hard time keeping his secret identity a secret if he had a bat cow shaped tan line. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're out in the daytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the other thing that uh, I really would like to point out about uh, this portrayal as a Batman cosplayer, mm -hmm. um, I appreciated the fact that they showed him when he goes into the club and he has the black around his eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, someone I was talking to said, well, I thought they were trying to make it look like he was emo. And I said, no, what that actually was is when I wear these masks um, or any mm. any Batman cosplayer wears the mask, you have to black out your eyes. Mm. So they were showing that he had just been in the Batman costume and he was going into the club straight after taking the costume off and he didn't have time to remove the makeup. So as a cosplayer... I really appreciated that because okay. that's exactly what happens when I switch a costume halfway through a con. I have to spend 20 minutes trying to get eye makeup off. Uh -huh. um, I looked it up while we were talking just because it was driving me absolutely crazy. Burgess Meredith. And I can't believe I forgot his name. That's who played the Penguin in the 1960s. Uh, he also was uh, Rocky's trainer. Mm, okay. Catch that chicken rock. Okay. You know, he had such a... A wonderful voice cool. but yeah great actor that's what i mean there were there were so many stars that were in that show um but do you know who played the penguin in this movie uh no but i i i, I mean I, I see the penguin from from the movie but who, who was that it was colin farrell was it it was and that's something that uh 
we've talked about. So, so they put the weight on him and it. And the makeup job, that to me is just phenomenal because you cannot look at Why that. Are you serious? I am very serious. And I think uh, it's definitely. A, did did a he credit. have a weight? Uh, man, that, that yeah, was... I'm sure they had him in a bodysuit. Yeah. Um, but uh, the makeup job was just phenomenal. And I've yeah. seen the behind the scenes of the layers that they went through to put that on him. And man. Oh, well, he, he, I have a new respect for him. Yeah, he, he nailed it. Uh, uh, great job. Something you had talked about um, before I let let you forget about it. Uh, okay. You talked about the relationship between Batman and uh, Detective Gordon in this version. Right, right, right. Um, because it was different than the, the way it was portrayed in The Dark Knight where um, he's commissioner by that point um, and he's... Or he becomes commissioner in that movie, and um, you said it was almost like Batman was doing a hundred percent of the work, um, and and Commissioner Gordon was just kind of going along with what Batman was doing. But in this one, they were more like partners, right? Right. And you said he he was he was detective, uh, in in this. Okay, so he was detective, right. and he was commissioner. Um, well, he started out as the, he was still a detective in uh, the beginning, I believe, of the Dark Knight. And then, if, if you'll remember, the actual commissioner was one of the victims of the Joker, uh-huh. and uh, so was the mayor. And like you know, he kind of went through his his group of people. And who was that? Who was that came in the movie? That it's like uh, Batman was there, and he was looking at the the crime scene or whatever. And why is he here? Or, oh, he yeah. shouldn't be here. Or right. Uh, well, there were there were different police officers who felt that way. And then there was the, the current commissioner felt that way. And, uh, I really, um, I also enjoyed the scene where the cops had him in the interrogation room and he used his cape as a way to kind of push back and used oh. it almost like a weapon. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah. And I was, I was also excited about, uh, when they implemented, uh, the cat woman. Now, Catwoman was really cool. I thought they did a, a wonderful job on that as well. I really liked how she was a very strong character who had her own motivations. <laughs> um, and they did a really good job of telling her backstory in a, a really yeah. convincing way. Um, so I think that's kind of where we'll stop the Batman conversation for now. And uh, we'll be right back. So real quick, before we wrap this episode up, I think we wanted to mention the two upcoming movies I think we're going to uh, probably be discussing in the near future. Right. Um, uh, Thor? Love and Thunder, right? Love and Thunder. Okay. So this will be the fourth movie in the Thor franchise uh, of just him, uh, not counting the Avengers movies. Okay. And uh, I think you said you were pretty excited about this one. Uh Correct. Uh, and this will be a theater watch for me as well. Yeah. I, I think it's going to introduce a lot of interesting concepts for the character. And I think it's going to be um, a lot of fun to see him going around with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be some great jokes um, that result from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, coming up and i actually think it's going to come out first before thor okay um but i'm actually really really looking forward to this dr strange now I, i've never seen dr strange uh i've heard the name heard the name uh i heard a lot of talk about it but never never engaged or, or watched uh well you saw him in uh in game and uh in infinity war remember okay okay so he was the sorcerer who Okay. See the future. He, he okay. There was okay. One. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's Doctor Strange. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, really excited about that because we're going to see Scarlet Witch uh, in the movie. We're going to see, of course, the multiverse. We're going to see different variations of different characters, um, and I can't wait to see how this is all going to tie in. Um, it's kind of like this. This all started from Spider Man No Way Home. And uh, some things that Doctor Strange did in that movie. I don't want to spoil it just in case anyone hasn't seen it. <clears throat> Derek. Um, <laughs> uh, but he's going to watch that this weekend. His son really wants to see it. And uh, 
you're going to love it. Uh, it it's, it's a great movie, and uh, it's going to set this movie up. Okay. So okay. it's definitely required watching, and uh, I think you're going to have a great time. Man, it's, it's, it's like just when I thought DC was gaining momentum, now it's like Marvel is... Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, now that DC has been has kind of changed hands, the, the overall parent company, uh, due to this recent merger, they're actually talking about rebooting certain aspects of the DC um, EU, which will be starting with Superman, uh, oh. which. You know, I, I've got some mixed feelings about that. To me, the best Superman will always be Christopher Reeves. Yeah. And uh, Christopher yeah. Reeves did such a great job. Yeah. He looked like he stepped right out of a comic book, in my opinion. Um, and uh, he just, he portrayed the character with a certain passion, I think. Um, uh, Henry uh, Cavill actually does a great job. Um Cavill, Cavill, eh, not sure, but anyway, um, dude, he does a fantastic job. He he has he looks the part. He's a great actor. Um, I personally think that they kind of went a little too dark with the Man of Steel movie, which kind of put him almost off balance to start with. I know there's some people who really really love that portrayal, but. <sighs> To me, Superman uh, always has to represent hope. He always has to represent um, a certain ideal. And people don't want to see a dark Superman uh, most of the time. Uh, or I, at least I feel that way. I feel like people want to see um, an inspiring version of that uh, character. Okay. Uh, if you want dark... I, I can agree with that. Yeah, you, you go with Batman, right? Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, so I really think that with what he had to work with, with the script, and I think definitely the, the Justice League Snyder cut, uh, I think was able to portray him in a very good way. And I think they could have built on that. Um, I just think that that, that first movie maybe was a little heavy. Um, but that's, again, that's all my opinion. Um, I think, uh, the Justice League Unlimited series uh, that used to come on, which is kind of like a, an animated version of Justice League, um, did a wonderful job of the way they portrayed Superman. Um, I think, and I, I really think that's something else that you and I really haven't discussed. Um, the animated universes, to me, DC's animated movies are way better than, than Marvel. Marvel's. Okay. I think Marvel's live action is way better than DC. Uh, I do think DC has gained some ground. Um, yeah, I think that um, they have done some really interesting things and some, some taking some big chances. Well, well I, I'd say for me, uh, you know, when I first dived in, when you first introduced me, I was all Marvel. Yeah, you're Marvel 100%. Right. And and so um, then we went to uh, CoastCon, mm -hmm. uh, and I sat in the panel, uh, DC versus Marvel, and, you know, I, I just kind of just, you know, observed uh, people's comments and, you know, um, their take on who, you know, who they like better. Uh, but at that point, I was, I was all Marvel, and then I go see the Batman movie, and I'm like, hey, DC really, you know, did something that's why i said they they gained some momentum but i, I we'll, we'll we'll see I, I'll, I'll give my reaction after uh the thor and uh dr strange but I, I really felt like dc uh gained a lot of momentum with that movie yeah and you know when it comes to watching movies that that's pretty easy for me i can do this all day yeah, yeah. um but for you i know it's a little more challenging yeah. uh you're you're getting more into it yeah um yeah. But, uh, and I, that's kind of exciting for me is seeing you go from someone who hardly watched anything yeah. to somebody who's like, all right, I'm going to see this at the theater. What's coming out next? Yeah. Um, if you guys could see him off camera when, when we're sitting around just hanging out, um, it's a total change. It went from, okay, Derek, I need you to watch this list of movies. Okay. Yeah, I'll watch them. 
<laughs> to, oh man, tell me what's going on here. Yeah. What, what's coming yeah. up next? What, and it's yeah. it's a totally different transformation. Yeah. And uh, that that's really what kind of started this whole idea of the podcast was to show his journey. And uh, I can tell you, and, come and a just long a, way. Just a short amount of time you have. You you've gotten more and more immersed as yeah. it goes. And uh, I think that's awesome. Um, so I, I ask that you guys continue on. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Definitely. Uh, um, it's so geek and cool. Yeah. And also feel free to leave a comment on what's your favorite Batman. Right. Who's your favorite interpretation of the character? Who's your favorite Batman villain? And what do you think about Derek cosplaying Detective Gordon? Because he's already mentioned it. Uh, I think he's kind of up for that. Um, yeah. And I think that would kind of be a cool, yeah. cool costume to add so, to him. So, so a list of things we got coming up. I know we got uh, we got Mobicon, Mobicon, uh, which is in Mobile, Alabama. It's going to be May twenty seventh, okay, twenty uh, eighth and 29th. ninth. Okay. Um, if you are going to be in the area, grab some tickets. Come on down. We'd love to see you there. Correct. Um, we're really going to try to get some, some good footage. footage of this con. We're going to try to, to talk to some people and, and kind of expand, um, our horizons just a little bit more. And, um, it's going to be exciting. Definitely. I, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, what else do we have? We're going to have the Mississippi comic con, uh, in June, in June okay. right. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'll probably be doing some time uh, at that con with the 501st. Um, oh, if you're going to be in Gulfport on May the 7th uh, at the Mississippi Aquarium, Aquarium okay. the 501st will be there. Um, the Aquarium's kind of doing a, a, a thing where they're going to have like a, a May the 4th be with you. Uh, and then they're going to have Revenge of the Fifth, and then they're going to have Return of the Sixth. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly what the events are on those days, but it's going to culminate with the 501st and the Rebel Legion being on site to take pictures and to interact with guests on the 7th. So if you're in the area, come on by, check it out. Uh, we'd love to see you. Um, I don't know if Lando's going to make it, but if, if he can, that's going to be awesome. Um, but... Uh, this has been a great episode. Uh, I'm Frank. I'm Derek. And this has been So Geek and Cool. So Geek and Cool. <laughs>